Well, from a young age, he knew that music was going to be a part of his future and he has made it just that. We're sitting down to chat about life and his song, I Found You, his dedication to rediscovering Christ with the very talented musician, singer-songwriter, Chris Sebastian. Chris, welcome and thanks for joining Thank us Thank you for on having me. I'm excited. Table. It's going to be fun. Now, you said that you knew you were going to be, music was going to be a big part of your life from a young age. So who introduced you to music? Um, that's actually really hard because I think... I, I was always running towards it anyway. So yeah. mum and dad had stuff around the house. Dad had all these really old school Motown records and stuff around the house. So I think I was always going to get into it. But I don't think there was like a single person. I think I just loved it from the start, from the very beginning. Wow. So do, can you identify any influences that you've had then? Um, as in family-wise? Oh, that too. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely my brother. I mean, yeah. watching my both my older brothers um, throughout like my whole childhood were doing stuff in church, whether yeah. it be mm. my eldest brother was a um, worship leader playing piano and singing, and then a guy was a worship leader and singer as well. So um, it was always been, like, around me. So it was and it was inevitable. It yeah. was always going to go that way. So you've got three brothers, is <laughs> three that brothers, right? Yeah. What was that like growing up with three brothers? <laughs> Mayhem, but so <laughs> Did you wear each other's clothes and... Basically, everything was a hand-me-down for the first yeah. little while. Until I figured out what star was, I think everything was a hand-me-down. Did your mum choose every other name before she got to yours? When yeah, she was but you? then yeah. even, like, she would call us every other name. Yes. Yes. My dad was the worst. Uh, Guy, Ollie, uh, Jeremy, who, Chris. It took, like, seven goes. Together. The dogs get rattled yeah, on the back of that the that neck. that happened once. I swear it happened once. <laughs> we what? make fun of it all the time. Like, you called me the dog's name. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. It's too much for a mum. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Look, you do yeah. come from a fantastically musical family um, and your brother's sort of been before you in the industry. Was yeah. he able to sort of give you any advice Absolutely. as you came into That's this? So much and still um, advice, lectures. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's, it's always come from a, a really, like, a, yeah. it's always been love and it's always been protection and... Um, always from a place of just mm. genuine brotherly yeah. love. So, When did you find that you kind of developed your style? Because just being surrounded by music. Yeah, is... that's actually really hard. It took a really long time. Um, I've, I was in a metal band growing up, wow. no which way. no one would be able to pick. Um, <laughs> I sang so much rock, but I've always loved r and I've always loved Motown. Mm. Um, so that honestly didn't happen until, I reckon, 2012. Hmm. I, I sort of honed into my sound. I was, I've done everything from R&B to... I did a bit of classical for a bit, which was weird. I didn't, <laughs> didn't love that. Um, but, yeah, I found like I found myself musically in about 2012. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since then, what's happened? Like, I assume, like, you've really written a lot of music. Yeah, it's pretty much all I do every day. I, I'm, I'm writing and recording and, and touring as well, which has been really fun. So oh, wow. music is literally everything that I do at the moment. Mm. So talk to us about your song, I Found You. Yeah. This was a song, I understand, you didn't intend for release. Yeah, it's, this is actually my favourite story of, of any song that I've ever written. I, because I, I write every day, so it's something that I'm, I'm constantly doing, whether it be for myself or for other people. Um, I sat down, like I always do, I was a whole intention I wanted to write a song, and I came up with this riff, which to me was a perfect pop song. It was like just ready for radio, and I felt really good about it. And it was late at night and I had this thought and it was obviously a, a little God prompt um, and it was, hey, remember me? <laughs> and I thought, when's the last time that I sat down with the sole purpose to write something for God? And here was this thing that I thought, this could be a huge pop song. This could be, um, you know, a, a, a way to into further the, myself. In, yeah, it. It, yeah, like it, this could elevate me. Um, but then there was this prompting of God and... At the time, it felt like I was like, well, you know what? I write so much and I do all this stuff. I, I want to sacrifice this mm. and make this about worship to God. And so that was my intention. Mm. Um, I sat down going, I'm going to give what I think is this really cool piece of music and this, this um, what I felt like was a gift. Um, I'm going to give it to God and just make it about worship. I don't want to release it. I don't want to, I didn't want to show anyone. It wasn't something that I planned to do anything with. It was literally just intended to be between me and God. So and, uh, how does it come to be released then? <laughs> well, I recorded it. Yeah. Um, and I took it to a friend of mine. And he's not a church guy. Like, he was, he's just a producer friend of mine. And he was, in his words, he just said, this is too powerful to not release. Wow. You've you got to show people this. Um, and that was huge for me. I think when you're showing someone who doesn't obviously have the same faith and doesn't... Um, uh, like have the, have the same beliefs as you, for them to get that message and for them to 
be impacted by it. That was huge for me. That's the reason I make music. That's the, 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 beginning, the beginning and the end of the story is I make music to make people feel, to, mm. to, to share a message and to tell a story. And for him to pick up on that with no background, I didn't tell mm. him the story. I didn't, there was so no background. So how long did it take to write the song? A night, which never happens. Wow. Wow. Never Quick. happens. I'm not one of those guys. I, you hear stories, oh, yeah, I wrote it in 10 minutes. I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> I, I, like my first single, I rewrote nine times. Wow. Um, so I'm, I, I labour over it and I'll write lyrics a thousand times. I wrote that in the one night and, and went to bed at like four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> but just feeling really good about it and just going, this is, this is something that I'm going to be really proud of. At, again, at the time, never intending for it to be released. So you talk about it as a song that helped you rediscover God's love and his grace yeah. for you. Yeah. So what was it that sort of, I guess, took you away, I guess? Yeah, so I, I didn't have, like, the the testimony of going away from God. I didn't have a crazy story about how I walked away. And um, what it was is the almost like a rediscovery of the magnitude of God's love. Mm. And it's this, come to me as you are. You are, per you, you are perfect the way that you are. You don't need to have it all together. You don't need to have everything figured out. Um, come to me the way that you are and I will love you. And that was that, this scandalous thing that I wanted to mm. sort of talk about, um, which we forget. Mm. Yeah, we do. How often at times, I know for me, I don't know if this is everyone's story, but I know for me at times I'm like, no, I've got to, I've got to, be doing things right for a certain amount of time before I can wholly come to God and well, freely come to God. you've got to dot the I's and cross Absolutely. the T's and, and be perfect. And that was, yeah. that's the opposite of the gospel. Mm, that's, yeah. That for me was, like that moment was, wait, how have I been getting it so wrong for mm. so long? I don't need to have it figured out. Um, God wants me to come to him in every state, in every situation that I'm in. Um, and that's where I wrote that song from. It was, it was real. It wasn't somebody else's story. It was mine. I didn't go away. I didn't, I don't have this crazy past story that I can share. I don't. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but what I, what I did rediscover was how, how powerful the love of God, the mercy and the grace yeah. of God is. And that's why I wrote the song. Beautiful. You yeah. think about your past and how you haven't had like a falling away experience. Yeah. What about the future? What does the future hold for you? Well, I'm hoping good things. Um, <laughs> good I, vision, you know. Yeah. So like I, I've, I'm planning on releasing a lot more music. I'm, I'm touring a lot um, starting this month. Um, and so there's, there's, I mean, I'm hoping to take it to a level that I haven't yet been. Mm. And um, I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm going to keep releasing music, but um, I feel like I'm on a real sort of trajectory up. And God will make it I'm... happen. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I was going to say, it sounds like life is sort of just getting really busy at the moment yeah, for you. Yeah, it, it really is. If we can jump back, just one other question. Yeah. What was the first song that you sang in public or on yeah. stage somewhere? I actually know this, <laughs> so, which is crazy. Um, it was actually a song called Jesus, Lover of My Soul, and I was in Sunday school. At church. And I sang it with my little brother. Oh, um, nice. And that was, yeah, that's my first memory of me singing in public. I love that. Well, it was we... horrible. <laughs> 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 yeah, so you're not supposed to tell us that. <laughs> no. We want to hear you sing today, so awesome. I'm going to go and let you set up for that. Perfect. Perfect. 